My name is Jerome Sparks, and I'm the author of Love, Death, and Other Lies. It's a, a horror novel about a woman named Liv Best. The authors, or the, excuse me, the publishers at Telltale have asked me to read a little bit of the story to you, uh, just an excerpt to give you a, a taste or a feel for the story itself, so I thought I'd read the prologue. February 24th, 2017. He woke, suddenly, as if escaping from a nightmare. He groaned as he forced his dry, matted eyelids open. Despite his effort, only more darkness pressed in around him. His tongue was thick and swollen, and a mouth that felt stuffed with sawdust. The air seemed heavy and smelled of strong chemicals and synthetic materials. His legs were stiff and his back ached. Shifting his weight, Connor discovered that his body was confined. Confused, he felt around him and discovered a space only a little larger than his own size, preventing him from moving. Even after that, the panic didn't immediately set in. His thoughts were drifting in a thick fog, memories hazy, and his immediate circumstances failing to register. He couldn't remember where he was or how he got there, and the lack of any illumination prevented him from doing a proper survey of his surroundings. But it was more than that. Connor couldn't remember exactly what had happened to him before he woke, not the immediate events that placed him there or those preceding them. He couldn't recall a single name to cry out, not even his own. All he knew was that he wasn't where he was supposed to be. He knew it deep in his gut. This was wrong. He struggled with the snippets he could recall. Faint images and impressions of faces and people and places. But none helped him recall anything more. He waited for his mind to clear, for the miasma to lift. Connor pressed his hands against the confinement and wondered at the cool, smooth texture of the fabric he was tearing at. When the crushing realization that he was in prison registered, a cold chill crept over him. He was entombed and alone. His mind suddenly racing, Connor fumbled to find some latch, some bolt or lever that would open a door or a window or a hatch to release him from his stifling cell. But there was none, no exit, no escape. And when he opened his mouth to scream for help, all that burbled up from his throat was an unintelligible garbled howl. Thrashing, Connor threw himself against the low ceiling and the walls of his personal vault. He clawed desperately at the soft, silky material inches from his nose until his cold fingers touched hard, smooth wood. Then he paused. He ran his fingernails over the polished wood. It was much too hard. Clawing wouldn't see him through it. If nothing else could cut through the fog in his mind, that fact had. It was horribly apparent. Connor searched himself, his hands pausing as they found his belt buckle. Loosening his belt, he slipped it from his waist. Then, gripping the metal buckle tightly in his hands, he proceeded to hack at the wood until it splintered. He continued to chip away for endless seconds, minutes, hours, the buckle cutting into his fingers and his fleshy palms with each thud against the roof of his cramped tomb, until a small break in the wood finally opened and Connor could smell the dank, rich odor of earth and well-watered sod. He continued on, pressing his muscles to action, summoning an incredible strength he never knew he had. Connor's fingers tore into the soil, shuffling mud and muck into his cramped confines, until he could finally begin to pull himself into the chasm he dug. Then, with his legs beneath him, he continued to dig and push and work his way up through the loose earth until his right arm jutted up and out of the ground into the open air. He could feel a cold, soft rain striking his skin. He used his legs to push his upper body up out of the earth, a dark sky above him, the gentle rain splattering against his cheeks, his fingers raw from tunneling through rock and dirt. Then, with one final burst of strength, Connor had hauled himself up out of the ground, collapsing in a mud beside the tombstone. It didn't sink in at first. Not at first. Not for a long while. He'd read the name on the tombstone four times before he finally placed it. Connor Best. And when it did register, he let out another loose, garbled howl. He knew the name was his, but he couldn't conceive of why it appeared on a tombstone. What was he doing here? Who had done this to him? 
jambling down the hill, weaving through a forest of gravestones and monuments. Connor made for the gates of the graveyard and the mist-shrouded road beyond. He struggled onward, his joints aching, his mind reeling, his memory still only discordant, drifting remnants of images and ideas, disembodied emotions and vague recollections. But as he hobbled along, one image came to him. One image stood out among all the others as he pressed ahead. Her image. The image of that young, beautiful woman. The woman he knew he'd once loved. The woman he knew he'd once desired. Longed for. Yearned for. The one woman he'd risked everything for. That was the woman he now wanted to kill more than anything. To rend her limbs from her body and listen to her scream in agony as he ripped the flesh from her bones. He wanted to place her under his heel and stamp out the last gasp of her life, but struggle as he might, he couldn't remember why. Although in that moment, as he stumbled onto the street, the why didn't matter. Only the urge mattered. The urge to do her harm. The urge to see her dead. The urge to rip skin and muscle from her body with his teeth. That is all that mattered. The rest would come to him later, when he'd finished with her. And so that's how the story starts. Uh, I hope you uh, read it and enjoy it.